Hello and welcome to another edition of National Focus. I'm Nisha Charles. Coming up, the Bagatelle Health Center receives much needed renovations. Fresh produce enhancement takes center stage at town hall meeting and over 180 students graduate from the Dominica State College. Details of our headline stories and more after this. Thanks for staying with us. With the operationalization of the multi-purpose pack houses soon to come on stream in Roseau and Portsmouth, the Ministry of Trade is working to enhance the trade of fresh produce in Dominica. On Tuesday, government ministers met with residents of the Roseau Valley constituency as a series of community meetings dubbed Keeping It Real in the Community continued. The Honorable Minister for Trade, Ian Douglas, explained his ministry's plans for trade, especially with regard to the trade of fresh produce. Honorable Douglas says his ministry's goal is to ensure that produce exported from Dominica meets international standards. The minister says the ministry is working with the Bureau of Standards to develop several farm certification programs, a national code for good agricultural practices, and several quality management system manuals for farmers. Twenty individuals have also been trained as fresh produce inspectors to work on farms and at the multi-purpose pack houses. The pack houses are expected to improve the way fresh produce is exported. At the same time, we have secured funds to the tune of $1 million from the European Union to purchase more equipment for labs for the National Center for Testing Excellence up at Stock Farm um, under the Bureau. And so that will ensure also that our exports of fresh produce meet the market. So we're dealing with it on a number of different levels and we put in a number of different systems in place to ensure that we get the kind of produce coming into the multi-purpose pack houses that we desire. Honorable Douglas says there are two other programs to complement the pack houses, a production support program and a market support program led by Dexia. So working with the Bureau of Standards on one hand, and we're working with Dexia, on the other hand, is a teamwork, a collaborative approach to ensure that we boost production and work with the agricultural sector also. And so that's one aspect of it, production support. And after the production support, there's another aspect of the program called the marketing support program to actually, when we have the production to the levels at which we want it, we will use the market support program to get the produce of our farmers into the markets both locally and regionally. The trade minister says regulating the trade of fresh produce will also allow for the re-implementation of the Fresh Produce Act. Because we had the Fresh Produce Act for a number of years now, but we, without those other mechanisms in place, we couldn't really implement the Fresh Produce Act. And so we'll ensure that according to the Act, that all fresh produce in Dominica to be exported pass through the pack houses and also that will um, curb the whole issue and the prevalence of predial larceny around Dominica because you would have to be certified and then all of your produce will have to go through the pack houses so that you wouldn't be able to just sell produce to Hoxas, Vikivai on the side of the road anymore. This new wave of exporting is also expected to boost employment from agriculture in Dominica. He says although pack houses are not yet fully equipped, hucksters have already processed over 8,000 pounds of machines using the facility. The multi-purpose pack houses will be fully operational by the end of this year. Health centers across the country are getting some much needed attention. The latest of these is renovations to the Bagatelle Health Center. The Honorable Parliament Representative for the Pitted Savant Constituency and Health Minister, Dr. Kenneth Darrow, says the $200,000 renovation was well needed. This health center might be, from what I, if I remember correctly, probably 30 to 40 years old, was built, um, in fact, a gift from the Brenda Strafford Foundation, a charitable foundation um, in, based in Canada. And um, it was built quite a few decades ago. And as you can well imagine, um, it would have had its fair share of wear and tear. 
Um, in addition, it had become a bit well, quite unsafe for the well, both the resident list and um, the, the, the clientele like because of the um, problems in electricity and also problems in water in, in the plumbing. So $192,000 was a contractual sum of works um, really um, extensive works done to the done, done to the facility which included um, the re electrification um, that the, the whole plumbing had to be redone and of course a lot of um, interior re um, um the bathrooms and also, as you can also see the outside a lot of painting um, I think a few of the shutters might have to be eventually changed and of course most importantly for the security of the place fencing as you can see the building also saw changes to its layout, making space for a pharmacy as well. In the past, the pharmacy would probably set up a table somewhere in this little alley where you see here. And of course, as, as you can well imagine, that would mean very little privacy and comfort for both the pharmacy and the clientele. Um, so we did a, a bit of a remodeling in the waiting area to have, have her own little, her own little cubicle where she can, where she can dispense her work. I mean, in um, comfort and more importantly, very important um, and privacy. The Honorable Health Minister says primary health care is of utmost importance, hence the need for upgrades to a number of health care facilities across the island. One of the first things I did when and I took up office was to go around the island and visit, visited. Um, in fact, all the health districts are visited and we visited and targeted and health centers, especially the more problematic ones. And I would have given a commitment that we would start addressing some of these problems. From, from the information I have, I know that Dodan has, is, has been addressed and is still being addressed. We would have done um, uh, um, some work, I think, on um, where well, Newtong is also an area that, that we need very, very critical. We would have done some work in the past also in, in Fokole. So we are looking at these areas because we think that it's very important, especially with the, especially with the um, whole issue of CNCDs. And we know that at the primary care level, the district level, this is where a lot of the this education and ongoing education and preventive medicine work is done. Many people come to do their blood and sugar checkup. This is where they get the, 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 the education, the information. So we think that these areas, this is where that should start and not really at the hospital because the hospital really would be receiving patients who are either um, in the end phase of end stage of certain diseases or, or, or their high blood pressure, diabetes is out of control, diabetic all diabetic food and etc. So um, so we think this is where the focus really has to be in the trenches right at the primary health care level. Dennis and Coret won the contracts to undertake the renovations. We changed everything entirely inside there. You know, complete change of, of the, um, the wall, internal walls, bathroom, treatment room, screening room, waiting room and um, there's an additional piece um, installed there for, uh, for the purpose of um, pharmaceutical uses where the pharmacist will be able to um, um, dispense uh, medical medicines uh, more privately to, to, to the patients. It's a more comfortable place right now for when they, when they come for their, their medical treatments, etc. Et so I think they will be grateful and uh, we are going to be thankful for our power rep, Dr. Kenneth Daru, with the support of the Dominican Labour Party for making an embankment on that great project. Twelve persons were employed on the project. In the 2015-2016 national budget, $52.1 million was allocated to the Ministry of Health, which included renovations to health centers across the island. The project, which began in July, is expected to be complete by the end of September. In more news, Phase 2 of the rehabilitation of the Salisbury Car Home Feeder Road has commenced. On Wednesday, GIS News accompanied the Honorable Parliamentary Representative for the St. Joseph constituency, Kelvin Daru, and other government officials to get a first-hand look at the progress on the project. Nicole's Esprit, Special Projects Coordinator in the Ministry of Agriculture, provided further details on the ongoing roadworks. The project was basically to shoulder blade both sides of the road from Salisbury Heights back down to the Meru Kahom area. That is basically completed, maybe just a few uh, f feet to be completed on the Mero side, but the Salisbury Heights to Timakushui, Kahom's end, as you can see, is completed to the, to the uh, joy and happiness of the farmers. I would like to take the opportunity to thank the contractor who did that section, Mr. Motley George. I think, and the farmers of the area think that he did a a very wonderful job and they are pleased with it 
it has enlarged the road and it has big parking and two lane traffic and ease of removing the um, products of the field much easier. Esprit says drainage has also been improved in that area. What you would have in the past is that um, the drains would be blocked, clogged and the water would now run on the road and dig holes and create trouble for farmers to access their farm. What the shoulder blading has done is that it has re-established the drain so that the water have the natural drainage path of the road. So now there would be less damage to the road by water during heavy rains. Four roads in the area have been earmarked for pavement, including 300 feet of road in Eric Hill, 500 feet of road in Tima Kushri Hill, as well as two other locations in the Salisbury Heights. The special projects coordinator says he is satisfied with progress made thus far. So far what I've seen, I'm very pleased with what I've seen in terms of the quality of the concrete. The, the, the contractors doing the work have um, stayed within the specification. As you can see, it's five, five, five to six inches thick, 13 feet wide. And I think the concrete quality is good, as you saw. And the farmers are happy and I'm pleased. And we look forward to having more farmers, which I notice is already taking place to come back to their farm because the access to the farm is much improved. And uh, the ease of taking products, that is to say, um, dashing, fig, yam, of the farm to the market is also eased up because you have improvement to the road access. Honorable Daru, Member of Parliament for the St. Joseph constituency, is grateful for the intervention. The resources are never easy to come by. And I must commend and thank profusely the Honorable Prime Minister for making the resources available so that we can have work being done on this road. This is a road that I, I, I know very, very dearly. And I know the condition of this road very dearly. And that is why government continues to spend tremendous resources on the development of farm access roads. I must also commend the Minister of Agriculture for his leadership as well. Because this farm access road has also been very dear to his heart. And he took the time out to visit this road personally and to ensure that with a collaborative effort for the Ministry of Public Works, we were able to quickly move ahead and to have immediate works effected here on this road. In March of 2015, the nation's leader, along with cabinet officials, visited the area and deemed the road conditions an emergency situation. Over $515,000 was approved by the Honorable Prime Minister for Phase 2 of the project last month. It is anticipated that Phase 2 on all four roads will be complete within the next three to four months. You're watching National Focus. More when we return. Children, remember adults should not ask you to keep secrets that make you feel uncomfortable. For more information on child abuse or to report suspected cases on child abuse, contact the Social Welfare Division on 33 Great Marlborough Street or call 266 3020 or 266-3080. Welcome back. When the Honorable Minister for Education, Peter Saint-Jean, addressed the 13th commencement ceremony of a Dominica State College on Wednesday, he quoted the words of the nation's Prime Minister, Roosevelt Skerritt. There is an education revolution going on here in Dominica. According to Honorable Seja, the over 180 students who graduated on Wednesday is tangible evidence that the statement was both bold and true. The class of 2015 adds to the over 4,000 students who have successfully obtained degrees since the institution opened its doors. Honorable Peter Seja says statistics over a 10-year period beginning 2001 have proven that something great is happening. Educational attainment increased significantly between 2001 and 2011 as reflected in a 28 percent increase in attainment. GCE or CXC certificates two. The number of students attaining associate degrees rose dramatically by 900 and 72 percent between 2001 and 2011. 
three bachelor's degree attainment jumped 130 percent between 2001 and 2011. There has also been a 60% notable increase in attainment of degrees at master's and doctorate levels. The education minister says that the Dominica State College is at the helm of that revolution. The Commonwealth of Dominica is in the midst of an education revolution. And I am standing at ground zero of that revolution. It is fitting that you are the premier post-secondary educational institution in the Commonwealth of Dominica. And it is absolutely fitting that you are at the center of the education revolution. Because these two facts are connected. They are, in fact, cause and effect. You are at the heart of the education revolution because that is what premier institutions do start revolutions that is what cutting edge institutions do blaze new trails meantime keynote speaker a dominican canadian leading technologist and graduate of the university of toronto dr laurel john baptiste had some encouraging words for the graduates I stand here today to let you know that the past does not have to dictate your future. Amen. The number one strategy that I would like to share with you is to be positive. It is easy to be overly consumed with the negativity of the world. Everywhere you turn, on Facebook, on Twitter, on the radio, there's always some kind of negative news. I define myself as an eternal optimist. Even in my darkest days, in the worst situations, I envision myself out of that situation, on the other side, recounting how I overcame that obstacle. Secondly, Aim very high. You can be the next Steve Jobs. Who says you can't? And if somebody tells you you can't, then tell them think again. Someone else's perception of you does not have to become your reality. Others may see you as unintelligent, not beautiful, stupid. What matters is how you view yourself. Over 30 students graduated with honors at Wednesday's ceremony. DSE valedictorian 2015 was Daislin Charles. Vibe Zara's Entertainment was named DSC Club of the Year. With the standardization of export of fresh produce in Dominica, a boost in production is anticipated. But for this boost to materialize, new and existing farmers have to plant more. This was made clear by the Honorable Minister for Trade, Ian Douglas, as he addressed residents of the Rosa Valley constituency on Tuesday. For a steady supply of fresh produce to be processed through the multi-purpose pack houses and to sustain market demand, government has projected a need to establish 200 acres of dashin, 150 acres of plantain, and 26 acres of hot peppers. To date, as we speak, we have already established 66 acres of dashin out of the 200 acres that we want to establish. And we will continue to work with interesting farmers to achieve our targets within this budgetary year. The equipment for the pack house is uh, 66 acres of dashing, sorry, 45 acres of planting, and 10 acres of hot pepper. So there is even more opportunity for new and especially young farmers to get in on the action, to create employment for themselves, and to earn revenue in those areas. The Honorable Minister was speaking at the third in a series of town hall meetings organized by the Dominica Labour Party government to discuss the 2015-2016 budget with constituents. The minister says government is working with Dexia to ensure that there is a steady supply of fertilizer available for farmers. All this to ensure that the production is maintained. In addition to these crops, the Ministry of Trade is also working with the Ministry of Agriculture to revamp the export of citrus. 
And before we leave, here's an announcement. The Honorable Parliament Representative for the Castle Bruce constituency, Johnson Drago, in collaboration with the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries and the Youth Development Division, invites the youth of the Castle Bruce constituency to a series of training sessions in fishport making, boat making, computer literacy and opportunities in agriculture. The sessions will be held on Friday the 21st of August at the Good Hope Resource Centre and Monday the 24th of August at the Castle Bruce Primary School. All sessions begin at 6 p.m. Please make every effort to attend and be on time. And that's the English news. Mark for St. Louis is next with the Creole highlights. Hello, tout le monde. Bienvenue à ce nouvel en Creole. Non, moi, c'est Mark for St. Louis. Premièrement, le territoire Kalinago qui est tout soutenu en système solaire, ça c'est génération électricité haute soleil. Projet sans la catapéci pour changement climatique Caraïbe, qui catapéci pour financial European Union, 400 000 dollars US. Même parlement pour Kalinago, honorable Cassius Daru, bien plaisir pour projet là. Projet ça là, son projet mon gars, mais pour être mais parce que mon gars, car tu dis projet ça là, il va vraiment toucher la vie mon place Kalinago territory. C'est un projet qui était commencé par Monsieur Monsieur Joseph, Chief Joseph. Et après ça, nous ne pas jamais tenir, mais on a tout le passé. Et actuellement, nous avons un projet là. Il est là, puis actuellement, nous avons une communication qui est un projet là. Et nous avons inspiré. Et ainsi, maintenant, la PS m'a informé que c'est mon nom qui pour faire un projet à un pays. Et aujourd'hui, nous avons un projet là pour faire un projet là. Le projet là, c'est comment dire, toucher la vie de tout le monde. Parce que le courant, l'électricité qui est produit par le projet là, car il vraiment baissé pour y avoir payé pour l'électricité à place Kalinago. Selon Honorable Daru, Pep Kalinago qui a mis employment hors de projet Salah. Et ce n'est pas ça seulement, il a aussi employé les jeunes personnes. Parce que pendant qu'il a mis les choses en place, nous avons des jeunes personnes qui ont travaillé avec eux. Après, ces personnes techniques ont quitté le pays. Nous avons des gens qui ont fait ces travaux-là, ça a été fait pour faire. Donc, so, là, nous disons qu'on a fait la maintenance. Nous avons fait la même pour ça. Et en plus, ces bagailles, nous avons dit avec la technologie. Uh, comme ingénieur, ça a été un jeu, un jam money, et fait, ouais, qui ça a fait Comment il a fonctionné Fonctionné. Et fait, nous même aussi, local authorities, là, nous avons gardé comment il a fait, et fait, pour nous faire différents reports, pour nous dire comment il a fait la place de la projet là qui est on a une nouvelle, plaisir d'autres travaux qui prennent place en constituant City Savan. Parole ça là, sorti en même parlement, honorable Dr. Kenneth Darrow. Il y a un autre travail pour faire de la constituant, mais quand j'ai eu un mot, quand je parle de la constituant, je vais essayer, 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 que 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 finalement nous avons eu bien qu'à 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 travailler qu'à travailler pour nous et ben en plein moi c'est pour pour ranger et ben et ben rénover tam tout tam road network là à dans chaque village à dans à dans chaque am chaque village à dans à dans constituency là et ben moi optimiste que à à tout ça là c'est quand tout moi que que nous que ouais nous que ouais comment ok que 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 comment nous vivons comment comment ça marche la nouvelle système d'information est bien important pour le programme du département pour empêcher la drogue dominique. Parole cela la sortie de l'Office du département de Malcolm St. Rose. Le département a formulé un plan 5 l'année pour combattre l'abysme de la drogue et de l'alcool en Dominique. L'autre but est l'information système. Si ce report là nous a mis là, si il est adéquat, si il y a assez, si ces informations là nous a collecté, si il n'y a pas de si l'année ça nous a créé des gaps. Uh, si nous avons fait service information là, si nous avons séparé pour d'autres personnes qui savent et évolué, qui ont formé, comme ça qui a fait un pays là. Et comment nous avons um, protégé l'information là, comment nous avons retrouvé les besoins, et bien bien comme ça. So, c'est un comprehensive plan, c'est un, un, un bien que nous avons fait qui, qui poussé tout d'autres plans pour combattre la drogue en pays là. Et bien, so nous avons Um, objectives, nous avons des goals, nous avons des missions, nous avons des activités. Ils sont action-oriented plans. 
et bien, nous avons déjà anticipé le pays qui a évolué avec nous, et bien, nous avons dit que nous avons dit merci en avance. Et puis finalement, le public dominique a encouragé pour un support pour le Festival Créole Mondial l'année 2016. Selon l'Office de relations publiques, Leroy Wadix Charles, programme l'année Sala qui est bien formidable. Nous avons encouragé tout le monde, festival là, à présent, et vivre nous, essayer de pousser, parce que ça c'est un festival qui a fait tout le monde à Dominique. Nous avons encouragé tout le monde, 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 nous avons encouragé ça nous a fait nous a poussé, nous a poussé le marketing festival là, nous a dit que le festival là c'est en Angers, mais tout le monde créole est rassemblé à Ouzo et nous a fêté, nous a annoncé toute la musique qui a descendu et l'année là ça nous a donné confiance. Le programme là c'est un bel programme et tout partout nous passons, tout le monde a dit que nous en Angers pour tout le monde. Pour Genèse, pour mon allage, pour mon amita. C'est vraiment, là c'est un festival qui est élevé plus. Et nous sommes vraiment contents en DFC et PDD. Mais c'est mesdames, ça c'est tout pour nous faire un croyant pour à présent. Non moins, c'est Mac Fousson Saint Louis. Au revoir. Coming up next, your tip of the day. Child abuse is unacceptable. Child abuse is not cultural, it is criminal. And one child abuse is one too many. For more information on child abuse or to report suspected cases on child abuse, contact the Social Welfare Division on 33 Great Marlborough Street or call 266-3020 or 266-3080. With school on the horizon, here are a few tips to organize for the transition. Nothing comes school year chaos like Calendar Central, a centralized site for all family calendars and schedules. Form is less important than function. A paper calendar with large squares lets you enter information easily. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash GIS News Dominica, and follow our Twitter at GIS Dominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. From all of us here on the GIS News production team, I'm Nisha Charles. Thanks for watching.